First of all, I want to thank Miss Hughes for that great introduction. She didn't tell you that her boys was stayed in my room more than anybody. <laughs> probably not because they was bad or nothing like that. It's because they just we just connected so well because me and their daddy made a couple turns back in the day. We turned out a couple rolls back in the oh, let me say. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm gonna leave that alone. I'm gonna leave that alone. <laughs> Uh, first of all, I want to thank Barbara Miller for, for giving us this opportunity this evening. I appreciate you so much. Happy birthday. And uh, I hope your 42nd birthday was great. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and I, I wish you many, 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 many more. Being from, being from Clinton, Alabama. Uh, I just found out she was from Greene County the other day. So. And we did our kitchen table the other day with Miss Miller, and it was, it was the craziest show I've ever done in my life. I tell you what, if Green County stand up. But uh, I want to <laughs> thank my wife for, for braving this weather today because I had to fuss at about 15 minutes. Come on, hurry up, get ready. I'm in the car. So thank you for coming out, Marche. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But anyway, I had a PowerPoint presentation because I believe in doing things excellent, doing things big and over the top. That's why I got over the to do too much digging award last night at Cornerstone. So, uh, did? yeah, I did. I did. I truly did. I do too much. I do too much. So I believe in doing stuff over the top and, 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 and greatness. I had a, a movie to show y'all that I did about my book. Um, but tonight, I'm, I'm going to just talk a little bit about me, about who I am. And, 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 and how I got to the point I am now. Um, my name is Rodney Pelt. I grew up in West Tuscaloosa and also in um, North Greene County in a little town with a little intersection called Matchaway, Alabama. Uh, Matchaway. Matchaway. It's about that big. If you drive too fast, you will miss it. Um, and um, I have a I had a lot of a lot of struggles in my life. Uh, I got married when I was 21. I met my wife in September. I married her in November. Uh, we moved. <laughs> yeah, she was five. Anyway, uh, <laughs> we uh, we had our struggles in life. <laughs> Fast forward a few years, I had uh, <laughs> went to combat and, and, and I, I got injured and I came back home and I had my struggles with depression and anxiety and a and, uh, um, whole bunch of other parameters of things that set me down a path of destruction, set me down a path that I didn't know that I was going to live the next day. I, I lived every day truly like it was my last day on earth. Um, and that's not going on vacation, not fishing, not hunting. It was popping pills and drinking. Like it was my last day. I didn't, I actually didn't, probably didn't even care if I did. I had a wife, all these kids that was coming like, like rabbits. And, uh, <laughs> and I didn't know. I just, I just didn't know. <laughs> I ain't gonna stay too serious too long. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get off the curb and come back. I'm gonna get off the road and come back. But in saying that, one night, one night I didn't know whether it was my last night. One night I said I can't take it no more. One night I said I'm tired. I'm tired of these nightmares. I'm tired of these headaches. I'm tired of this addiction that I'm fighting. I'm tired of my wife. I'm tired of people around me. I'm tired of people looking at me. One of my strange. I'm tired of going on a job and people say they're scared of me. I'm tired. So one night on the side of the road, I took a gun, my gun, and I actually put it in my mouth. And I pulled a trigger. And it didn't fire. I took it out. I shot out the window. Bah, bah, bah. Put it back in my mouth again. Mm. Pulled the trigger again, didn't fire. Mm -hmm. And God said, I got something for you. Wow. I got something for you. Oh. Don't clap. <laughs> <laughs> Let me 
throw me off track when you clap. <laughs> he said, I, "He said I got some. He said I got I got some greater for you. I got some greater for you." So the next day, uh, I was in the bed and I told my wife, I "said We leaving. We moving. Move back to Tuscaloosa." So we moved for move, and cycle happened again. I wasn't being obedient. I wasn't listening to God. I said, you know what, man, I got my, my check, everything going good, my kids straight. I'm, I'm finna do my own thing. Back again. Back to the same addiction, same things I was doing. Wilding. Tried it again. Got tired. Tired. I said, I'm tired. I don't know what to do. I was going to the doctor. The doctor's telling me, oh, ain't nothing wrong with you. I ain't nothing wrong with you. Go sit down. You all right? You good? They gave me a therapist. I made, I, I did, made great strides. I did some great things. Then all of a sudden, my therapist left. So here we go, downhill again. Downhill again. Same gun in my truck, in my driveway, at the house I live in right now. Nope, you didn't know that, so be quiet. Same thing. Still didn't fire. God said, I told you, listen, I got something for you. Then two or three days later, my change was boom. And the first topic I want to talk about is resilient. I've been fighting that battle for about nine years because I was recovering from readiness from an illness, depression, or an adversity. I had to be resilient to get to the point I am today. I fought because I knew I was recovering. I was a recovering addict. I was recovering from all the adversity and all the depression, the suicide attempts. I was recovering from all of that. So I had to be resilient. Because I said, keep going. Don't stop. Even though you got these battles, even though you're fighting these illnesses, even though you're fighting all this stuff that's going on around you, trying to repair marriage, trying to get my kids back together, trying to keep my home, trying to uh, 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 keep my family, my, my mother, my take care of my mom, and my, my stepfather got uh, uh, dementia, and, and all this stuff going on. I had to be resilient. I had to fight through all of that to get to the point I am today. Then I had to learn how to be transformative. I had to change and form my appearance and my character. I had to know that I had to to, to, to flip the script almost. Take that suicide attempt and use it to help somebody else that might go through the same thing. Be transformative. Change everything around you. Be a change agent for everything that's going on around you. Because if I change my life, hopefully, prayerfully, somebody that see it, that know what I went through, will change theirs. So I had to be transformative. And the last one, I had to be patient. Yes. I had to wait. I had to wait. I've been, I fought, and I'm just be. me and my wife fought for five years. Not physically fought. But we fought to save our marriage for five years. Anybody else would have just walked away. Me and my pastor have cried many nights. No, I cried. Yeah, I cried. <laughs> People cried on the inside. <laughs> no, he, he cried. He cried too. He cried. Too. He cried too. <laughs> he messed me up. Do I? <laughs> He cried. He cried. He cried on the inside. Anyway, <laughs> I had to be patient. I had to have the ability to endure the difficult circumstances. I had to have patience to do what I did. Do what I did. I had to do to get through what I was going through. Like I say, five years fighting, fighting for a marriage, fighting for better. Then I got to the point where I had to not only that my fat marriage straight, children straight. Then I got into the the business of trying to save lives. God said, this is what I got for you to do. Put your selfless thoughts aside.
Because what you see is your future ain't your future. What you set up for you is not for you. It's the ability that I put inside of you and what I put inside of you, that's for you. So that's what mind changes came about. That's what came about me able to talk to a kid that's battling suicidal thoughts. Talk to a young man, a young lady that's fighting depression, anxiety, that's going through stuff at home, parents putting them out. Going to the jail, sitting and talking with a man, a young man that just murdered somebody the day before. Or robbed and stole. That, God gave that to me because I had to go through those stages. Resiliency. Being transformative. And have patience. We have to do that in our lives. Regardless of what you go through, regardless of what you think your mission is, you got to pray about it. And know that God put that on the inside of you. And then you can truly be, truly be resilient transformative, and be patient. Thank you for this opportunity, Barbara. That's all I got. Oh, hold up, hold up. I got a book <laughs> called It Never Fired. It's on Amazon.com. You can go to uh, itneverfired.com and purchase the book. It's only $15.99. I appreciate it. Everybody in here took their phones out right now and ordered my book. <laughs> Thank y'all for this opportunity. I appreciate it.